This is the Ordnance Quick Firing 25 pounder Mark II 1 on mounting self propelled 25 pounder Australian Mark I on carrier Grant self propelled 25 pounder Mark I, commonly referred to as the self propelled 25 pounder Uramba. Now, the name Uramba is an Aboriginal word given by the Wiradjuri people in central New South Wales. Uramba is an instrument for throwing spears. Now, this vehicle started as a project in July 1949 by Major John Whitelaw, where approval was given to modify one M3A5 grant to a self-propelled configuration. From about December 1949, the vehicle underwent firing trials at Puckapunyal, was approved by about February of 1950 to modify another 13 M3A5 grants. So the first one was made uh, at Monagita in Victoria, the rest were made by the Ordnance Factory in Bendigo. So out of the 14 made, this is number three. Now the vehicle itself was only operated by one unit, that was the 22nd Field Regiment. They operated these vehicles within about three different batteries alongside ground mounted 25 pounders. They had one vehicle that was used as a training vehicle where the rest of them were housed at what is known as the Armoured Centre at Puckapunyal. Now they didn't see a lot of service. These vehicles went out of service in 1956 along with the remainder of the Lees and Grants family of vehicles within the Australian Army. Uh, so this vehicle was restored by Melbourne Tank Museum quite a few years ago. There's a few things that aren't quite right. We should have that armoured cover on the front. The serial number, not quite right. We do know the serial number so we will change that in due course. And this is the early suspension with the centre guide roller where we should have the trailing guide roller. You can sort of see there's a a line just along here so this is where they essentially pulled the top case made off a grant and used uh, Australian armour plate to uh, build the upper part of this structure. They left the doors as opposed to say the sexton where they took the doors out. Essentially this part here would have been your one of your visor blocks so they've just uh, welded another plate on there. Same thickness for grants about 38 millimetres on the side and the front of the vehicle. Two engines so two six cylinder engine, so this is the 671s, the configuration 6046. So we have the two engines side by side and we come into one transfer case, which then transfers power into one output shaft to the transmission. So this gives us roughly about uh, 400 horsepower and can propel this vehicle along at about uh, 40 kilometres an hour on road. And we hold uh, just over 600 odd litres of fuel and that'll give us roughly about 200 kilometres of operational use. The business end is the 25 pounder. To put it in a self-propelled mount, you had to redesign the inside of this grant. So essentially we have bolster and beam configuration which is welded onto the sponsons on a new developed saddle which gives it the strength to be able to uh, take the recoil when this gun fires. Got the 25 pounder, with this we can go up to a maximum of about uh, 40 degrees in elevation compared to a ground mount which goes to about 45 but being a lot lower and this being a lot higher we can essentially fire at the same uh, distance in range. Have the muzzle brake on the end of the gun so we can essentially fire an armour piercing shot on supercharge but because we've added extra weight on the front of the gun we've also added a counterweight. Down here we have a Travis indicator which is a brass plate so we can essentially traverse 20 degrees left and 20 degrees right. So we have a 40 degree arc as opposed to a ground mount 25, which has about a four degree left and right. So this will give us, uh, again, a maximum firing range of about uh, 12,250 meters. Now the ammunition that they carry on here is uh, a mixture of HE, smoke and AP. A 25 pounder is about 11.5 kilos have our illumination projectile, so we can fire smoke and a loom, but we also have armor piston ballistic capped round as well. So we carry 16 AP rounds and 88 high explosive or smoke rounds. So they're kept in the box here. Underneath the floor plate is where we can stow the additional uh, charges with their, in their cases and the additional pr projectiles. The floor also gives us access to our drive line. I'm currently sitting in the driver's position. All the steering controls, because we've got the gun here, were moved to the right hand side of the vehicle. Steering bars, as per a normal grant, have throttle controls for both engines because this runs off the twin diesel configuration. Same gearbox, so five speed synchronized box. Now, an interesting point to start this vehicle is we have our starting switches down here. We have it in neutral, put your foot on the clutch, start one engine, let that engine warm up for a couple of minutes. But when we want to start the second engine, 
simply take the foot off the clutch slowly and the second engine will kick in. Right hand side here, have a mount for a 303. So obviously a driver's personal weapon. So you've got another setting position here for the gunner. So he uses his, uh, he can use his number 29 sight. Um, you can also have a, a dial sight here. He's got his hand controls here for both elevation and Travis. But along here, because he's sitting so close to the gun, there should be a shield here to protect him from the recoil of the gun. This is the commander seat. It's not actually here, but this is where it would be fitted. He would also have next to him the uh, number 19 radio. Where you're standing is where the other three crew members would have to stand or sit on the sponson. Apart from having the battery box here, so it's a 24 volt system, you can also carry another 303 in this position. Uh, we can also carry two Owen guns. And if we swing around onto the back deck, that box there actually holds two Bren guns. Because it was the first self-propelled gun we had in Australian service, they wore the Armoured Corps Black Beret, even though they had the artillery badge. So it's not too many times in Australian military history, unless we go to, say, start getting into Vietnam with the M108s, where they again were able to wear the Black Beret as per the Royal Australian Armoured Corps. When this vehicle went out of service in 1956, the last remaining crew that were on here, three crew members, actually etched their names into the side of the hull. Now, if anybody has family members that was in the 22nd Field Regiment that uh, know these people, please get in contact with us because we want to know. And even the address, they've uh, etched the address where they lived in Melbourne. Great vehicle to have within the museum because there's only two left in the world. So if you want to come and have a look at this vehicle, please visit us at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum, or better still, make yourself available for Oz Armour Fest, 23rd to the 25th of August this year.